Hey guys, welcome back to Vito's Garage. Today is going to be another video. It's going to be an interesting one. And hopefully it's going to be something that uh, you guys have been looking for possibly because I'm pretty sure that this issue is pretty common on uh, a lot of classic Mercedes, including W126, W124, W201, W140 and some other ones. Mainly the ones that have been sitting for a while and these seats, which is what happens to them, is actually they still work, but what happens is like they're really stiff, you can't really move them easily, and they, they do not spring back uh, to their original position, um, unlike they're supposed to, because whenever you you know press one of these switches, either the backrest or this or that, they're supposed to spring load back and they're supposed to feel nice and smooth, but in this case, they're not and I already rebuilt one of these and I'm gonna show you uh, how I'm gonna rebuild the other one so stay tuned and once again don't forget to subscribe like this video comment down below and let me know how your day is going today guys all right you know anytime I make all these videos but I never ask you how you guys are doing I hope you guys are doing amazing all right comment down below how you guys are doing and if you ever need any help let me know, all right? Um, recently, I've been saving a lot of classic Mercedes and BMWs just by texting literally random people and asking them if they need help because I've seen a lot of cars for sale that are for cheap and they're like all over the United States or other countries and they're just sitting and not running and stuff like that. So I've been working a lot on that, especially because I have a little bit more free time right now. So anyways, today we're gonna talk about these switches. Let's go. All right, so usually I use gloves to do this or to do any kind of job on the car, basically. But right now, I'm not going to use those. But I wanted to show you something really interesting. All right, so this is actually really pretty common on a lot of uh, classic Mercedes, including W126, W124, W201. Um, and it can act actually happen to a W140 chassis as well. So check this out. So when I try to, let's say I try to adjust the seat, right? So when I try to move it, the switch is just really stiff. It just doesn't want to move. Same backwards, it kind of moves, but it doesn't even like spring back. So it's just like stuck, seized. And then the same thing with the backrest. I can barely move it, it's just really stiff, all right? And same thing when you, when you try to move the bottom portion of the seat up or down, it just, it's like stuck, it's super stiff. And these buttons work and this one will usually work this is the headrest this usually works um, and this usually never sees it because it's made up a little bit different um, so we're gonna take it apart right now and I'll show you what's inside of it all right and now to the uh, comparing like this one to this one that I just you know recently rebuilt so this is uh, this was the same way as this switch. Uh, I could barely move it, but right now, check this out. After taking it apart, lubricating it, cleaning it, this is what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, this is really nice. Same thing with the backrest; moves nice and spring springs back to place. So that's pretty amazing. All right. So we're gonna do the same thing to this switch right now. Okay, so since this one's rebuilt, I'm gonna put it aside. We don't need it. I'm gonna focus on this one, okay? So I have a bunch of tools with me that we're gonna use and uh, I'm gonna try to make this video as uh, simple and as quick as possible. Uh, so we're gonna grab, uh, actually I'll grab a flathead now when I have a flathead, I'm gonna wrap it in a towel. And the best thing is to actually use a plastic tool because you have to pop these out. So you have to go carefully underneath, or you can actually, I'm gonna try to actually use my hand and just carefully pull up on them. And as I pull up on them, I'll try to pry up on these plastic switches. You just have to be really careful so you don't break anything. You have to take your time, you have to be patient with this. Okay, so there's one of the switches. 
this comes out. So like I said, just be very, very careful. Now we're gonna move on to this back one, backrest. Carefully, Let's see if I can just use my hand maybe, pop it up. There you go. See that came out. Looks like that, put it aside. Now over here, as you can see, before I go to this uh, ring, I have to also remove this one. Like I said, guys, make sure you take your time doing this. There it is. Okay, and now as you can see right in there, there's actually a plastic ring almost like a snap ring so I'm gonna grab my pick and uh, there's a slot in it right there so I'll just have to hold one side and turn the other side or you can go from the back side and carefully catch it Make sure you grab a hold of this. I think my battery died or is about to die on this. Okay, there it goes. It didn't break. All right, now we can lift this plastic plate off. And this will literally expose everything. <laughs> it's literally gonna look kind of like this. All right, so this is what it looks like. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and go on this side and I'll remove these switches. And these are just some extra parts that I got online. So I'm just gonna be taking them apart, cleaning them and saving all these amazing parts. One more switch. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna go to the next part. The next part is going to be removing this Phillips screwdriver or screwdriver, <laughs> the screw. So we're gonna take the screw out and that's basically what holds the whole assembly in minus all the clips that go all the way around. So taking this out. Okay, so screw is out. Now there's a bunch of clips all the way around. I'm gonna pop those out carefully. Grab a tiny flathead screwdriver. And it will take some time, just little by little, so I don't break anything. Be very patient. A lot of people are not patient, so you will see what I mean when I say patient. Okay, that's just the clip popped out. Now you're just basically grabbing the screwdriver and just kind of like carefully prying up on it. trying to take my time so I don't break this. Just gotta be really careful. Okay. I'm just gonna move 
move on to this side. There you go. Don't worry. So that whatever you heard, that's that's nothing. Don't worry about that. And uh, when we lift this plate or this housing, you will see that a bunch of springs and uh, ball bearings will all be jumping around and will go all over the place. That's totally normal. As you can hear, <laughs> everything is rattling inside. Okay, so I think we popped all the clips out. And right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. All right, so as you can see, everything right here is out. Nothing is broken, it's just a lot of dust in here, so we'll have to clean that. And I'm noticing, I'm noticing a lot of rust in some of the spots, so we will have to take care of that. All right, guys, so now I have to be really, really careful. It would be better if you guys get some kind of a, a tray to put all these parts in. Okay, but I, in my case, I'm just going <laughs> to put this glove here, and I'm going to all the parts on top of that glove so we have all these different parts spring loaded and also a bunch of springs so we have to just clean all this stuff really well take all these buttons out move them to the side and uh, so these springs right here you guys will notice in a second these springs need quite a bit, they have quite a bit of rust corrosion on them so I have to clean them up really well get rid of that and then obviously at the end we're gonna use a lot of grease not a lot but we're gonna use quite a bit of grease to grease all these up so they move nicely and they don't seize in the future So in this case, when you're working with this, it's uh, it's not. It would be nice to have tweezers, but I don't have tweezers today, so I'm just gonna use all the resources I have. So this, by the way, will stay in. This doesn't really come out. You can take it out if you want, but we'll probably just leave it in place. gonna dump everything so if we look at this circuit board kind of old school circuit board so we can see some corrosion so we're gonna you can use some kind of like a sandpaper fine grit or you can do what I do is just kind of go with a screwdriver and just kind of sand it with a screwdriver and this light is not listening to me it's trying to die on me stay light stay lit just one more cover inspect everything just one more bolt here boom Going back to the mechanism for the headrest, it actually sits right here and it doesn't really like seize up ever because uh, there's a ball bearing in here and a plastic pin, but it doesn't, this part doesn't use a spring. So the spring never, you know, is never there. So that's why there's nothing that can corrode in this spot. That's why this headrest 
the you know it never actually seizes up on you but the rest of the mechanisms and switches right here they actually use uh, they use a spring or multiple springs and those springs they can get rusty and they can stop moving well especially if it's never been used so if you have switches like that in your car just any type of uh, seat switches make sure you use them from time to time you know um same thing with like a sunroof you know make sure you use a sunroof just you know give give all your stuff or all your parts some good exercise okay that's important you guys so now i'm just gonna go ahead and spray this carefully and we're gonna clean this area pretty well. I'm gonna make sure we clean. There's some more of those clips falling out. Literally, we're gonna clean it really, really good. All these contact points. And we're gonna wipe it off. Make it nice and clean, clean off all the corrosion. I'm gonna make these switches work great again. dry while this one is drying I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning all the rest of the hardware make sure it's all good and nothing is corroded Also note, don't rub too much on these numbers because they will wear off. All right, don't don't rub too much on them. All right, just I'm, I'm avoiding doing that. I'm not even gonna try to. I'm just gonna be really careful. Don't really want to wear these off. So here's the reason why these uh, switches weren't moving too well because of rusty springs and ball bearings. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning all these from rust and uh, making it making all these pieces nice, and then we're gonna start our reassembly, which will be the biggest task. Using 320 grit sandpaper, I will be removing the rust off of all these ball bearings that have the rust and uh, also off of the springs because those little springs are actually quite a bit rusty. And if you want, you can also submerge all these rusty parts into the acetone and leave them like overnight and acetone will usually take care of all the rust and will dissolve the rust works actually pretty good. Okay guys, so I finished cleaning everything. Everything looks really, really nice and cleaned up and I'm getting ready to put everything back together. So right now, uh, also keep in mind, 
that I cleaned and um, I cleaned all this hardware and it's all ready to go back. And make sure that when you're doing this, you're really careful so you don't lose any pieces because there's a lot of pieces there. Okay, so also I have some uh, just regular bearing grease uh, ready because I'll be using that. Also take a note, so as you guys remember, I was uh, talking about the, you know, the headrest at the beginning of the video, and I was telling you how the headrest itself, it doesn't really seize up like ever. Um, and that is because, well, it uses a spring uh, and it uses a ball bearing, uh, but it doesn't use a piece like this. And that's why um it doesn't it doesn't have any issues you know it doesn't really seize up so that's the biggest difference the other switches that are in this uh, housing they actually use both springs ball bearings and these contact points like i said tweezers are the best thing but i don't have them today so i'm just gonna start connecting these Once I'm done, I'll obviously show you everything, how it looks, but it's a little bit of a patient job, this. How did I not think about grabbing some tweezers? I'm just brand new. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just brand new. Don't trust anything that I do, guys. I'm just a tweaker. <laughs> but no, honestly, these uh, switches, that's a pretty common problem. So that's why I'm doing it. And that way these switches can just, you know, stay on the shelf. And whenever I need them, I can obviously use them there's nothing else that goes really wrong with these switches sometimes they can go bad so i mean i've seen w124 w201 switches go bad um but as far as like these mechanisms nothing really breaks here it's just they you know they become stiff from uh, a lack of lubrication and things like that So we're done with these and uh, after this it's gonna be probably one of the hardest parts so I'm gonna install this cover it goes so it has three pins three plastic pins and they go to their respective holes like that now the hardest part is gonna be assembling these uh, ball bearings and springs So take a look at these two springs, see how different they are. One is tapered on both sides. The other one is literally like the same length on both sides. All the coils look the same. So the one that is this, which has, you know, the same diameter of all the coils. This one is actually going to go into one of these, which is for the headrest. All right. But before doing that, I'm going to apply grease to this. So I got some good grease here and uh, using my amazing screwdriver, I'm just going to add some apple jam to this bad boy and then I'll grab this spring and install it there 
I'll make sure that I move it all the way around a little bit so it's nicely lubricated like so put that aside for now all right guys we're ready to move on to the next step and right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the headrest uh, pin assembly and so I already put some grease I'm gonna add some more and I'm gonna grab the ball bearing move it around a little and then it's gonna go right on top or you can just drop the ball bearing in there already like so and then you just have to fix it like that and then we're gonna grab this and we're gonna install it like so okay so it's gonna it's gonna stay there so it, as you as you know it's spring-loaded so you have to kind of work with it gonna let it sit like that now next one is gonna be we're gonna start on the back rest so as you can see this has this metal pin I'm also gonna go ahead and put grease on it like that so it moves nicely both ways okay now I'm gonna grab this uh, ball bearing also put some grease on the ball bearing drop it here on this side and grab another ball bearing put grease on it drop it right there oops one of them decided to come out not a big deal just keep an eye on them and then you're gonna grab this assembly and uh, install it so if you're not sure which side it goes on whether it's this way or this way you can always grab this piece set it on top like this and you will see which way it has to go it's gonna go on one way only in this case it's gonna go I'll show you in a second. First, I'm going to grab the coil springs, put some grease on them. Come on, light, work with me. You can do it. I've got to fix these amazing cars, these amazing parts and cars. Okay, I'm going to put the spring in one end, and then put the other spring after lubricating it onto the other side. And then we're gonna carefully set this whole thing on top. Sorry, it's actually gonna go this way. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna go like this, sorry. Uh, I was wrong, so not this way, but it's gonna go like that. I was thinking of the other switch piece so that's gonna sit like that all right and be really careful don't like knock anything loose because all these pieces are still loose in there and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side okay so we're gonna lubricate this one and trust me I usually use gloves when I do this but this is just all these parts are so small so I just have to do it this way Like that so perfect
ball bearing. Like that. Spring. On both springs. One. Two. And now this switch is going to go sit just like this. Like that, taken out of that, okay. Now, since we didn't really take this switch off, I don't wanna take it out, this metal one, and just go, it's just flops around like this. So I'm gonna grab grease and uh, I will add grease to it like that, just manually. And then I'll move it around bearing in there just drops in after the ball bearing we're gonna put a spring spring goes in there same thing on the other side ball bearing Like that, and the spring. Okay, all right, and final assembly, this one. Same exact thing, just put grease on it. Onto that pin, and move the pin around, like so. Ball bearing like that. Ball bearing on the other side. See, this is why you want to use the tweezers. Again, spring. Spring goes to one side. Second spring goes to the other side. And then this switch will go right on top of those ball bearings. Like so. Patience, patience. The final, not the final, but it's gonna be kind of difficult right now because I still have about uh, eight ball bearings and those eight ball bearings are gonna go right on top of these coil springs, which is gonna be a pain to do. And then also you're gonna have to install these switches right here as well at the same time so that's gonna be a big pain now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this assembly so, so we're gonna add some of this in there and it's not really necessary on this side but here's what you need to remember now 
you're gonna have to put a lot of grease here on this switch and that is because so all these buttons will need to be greased up really good I will reveal the secret in a second okay so and then it's gonna go right in there like so you see how this button stays and doesn't fall that's what you need to do so you're gonna do the same thing with this button number two you're gonna grease it really really well on all sides like I mentioned be careful with the number you don't want to mess up that number and wash it off so okay come on flashlight cooperate with me a little bit we have a little bit more left to go number two is right there and now we're gonna do the same with this green memory button so put a lot of grease here never too much lubrication guys remember that's what she said and then then okay now let's uh install this one so this green button it has a uh, like tabs so it goes on one away there's like three tabs okay so th this assembly is all ready to go now i'm gonna start installing those ball bearings i was telling you about There's one. Seven more ball bearings to go. Okay. Two. Six more. Six more. Six more, guys. Just six more. Let's try it, let's try it. Let's see if I'm that good. It's like playing Tetris. It's actually amazing German engineering. Like thinking about this that this I mean this switch is still working. There was no issues with that switch, it's just it was so stiff. And it's like a forty year old part. Amazing. Four more to go. Two more to go, guys. Two more. We're almost there. One more. All right. 
right guys so there you guys have it okay everything is ready and now it's going to be the last final part which is going to be a little bit nerve-wracking because i have to reinstall this back cover i have to make sure that these buttons stay in and nothing gets messed up because uh you know if i if there's something that happens right now um basically <laughs> if the tower falls i will have to do everything all over again it's, i'm gonna be back to square one so you know if you're doing this for the first time it might take you a little while you might have some you know trial and error uh but you know don't give up you'll be able to get it done just have some patience you know eventually you will get it and you will have some really nice working switches so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to get these three bottom switches kind of aligned as much as i can and we're gonna try to install this bad boy Okay, so I kind of have it down. Now I have to just seat it. So you can use, if you want, you can also use your screwdriver and guide these tabs down one by one. If you want, just be careful. Keep putting pressure on it. Slowly and surely, turn it around and keep putting pressure on it. And then pry on this housing portion a little bit so this switch can jump in. Like that. Now, just go right here. I don't know why, but my flashlight, for some reason, my headlamp doesn't think that we're in a, in a relationship. So I'll have to have a side conversation with my flashlight and we'll have to become best friends again because uh, she keeps turning off on me while I'm filming some really important, important information to my classic car enthusiasts, my friends and subscribers. But anyways, so there you guys have it. We're gonna retest it in a second. I'm just gonna wipe off this excess grease and then we're gonna test it, all right? In a second. And also make sure you shake it and there's no loose pieces in there. Okay, you guys are ready. We're gonna test it right now. So check it out. Okay. Everything moves nicely. And it's gonna be a lot easier to move all these buttons as soon as install these uh, decorative trim pieces, the plastic ones. And then make sure that these buttons are not stuck and they also spring back as soon as you push them. All right, and then uh, final thing, as soon as you're done checking all your buttons, uh, go ahead, install your screw, just the Phillips screw. And that's it, all right, wipe it down again. And don't worry, we didn't use too much grease and uh, it's not gonna affect the operation of the switch because that grease doesn't really get in onto any uh, electrical contacts. Um, electrical contacts are those traces, uh, metal traces. The, those are the ones that 
you have to worry about you just have to make sure that you know you clean that corrosion off but uh, for these springs and ball bearings you can use as much grease as you want all right now i clean this off let's go ahead and install this back it just goes on like that and then we're going to install our plastic snap ring There you go. Okay, it's just what it does, it just holds this assembly so it doesn't keep falling. Um, yep, next thing what I do is I really recommend for you to do the same thing. I'll show it to you in a second. I'm gonna grab more grease and what I do is uh, I shove a lot of grease inside of this. That way, what this does is next time when you're gonna pull these off, you're not gonna break these uh, trims. Sometimes there's a possibility that you can break these trims because if there's a lot of force or whatever, you can, but when you put more grease in there, it's gonna actually protect it and it will not cause that issue. Look at how nicely they move now. Wow. Okay, next one. We're gonna do the backrest. I'm gonna just add some grease. Looks like this is some factory grease right there. So they were putting some grease from the factory on this guy, which is awesome. Okay, let's install this one. Snaps in. And final one is gonna be for our headrest. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease in there. Headrest. Boom, boom, like that. Amazing. That is it, guys. We are all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was really helpful for you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, subscribe, share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to save amazing classic cars. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.